Okay, so today we're hopefully gonna be putting the uh, Aki Sump in. I already took out the back seat, so there's uh, lots of room for it to go in. What I'm gonna be doing right now is I'm gonna be trying to open up that uh, gasket with a, uh, a drill bit so that I can try and fit this hose through. Because if you remember from the radiator install episode, I was saying how like it's, uh, it's very small, but the gasket itself is very big. So I'm just gonna try and find a bit that will enlarge that big enough that I can fit this uh, hose through. So we're gonna go ahead and try that right now. Here's in my tool bag. So this is a uh, male 18 by one and a half metric concave to eight and male fitting. So the concave side is going in the engine and I'm gonna slip an O-ring around it, but make sure with and fittings, whenever you're putting them in, that you uh, always loop up the threads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little bit of motor oil we're just gonna put it on the threads that way they don't um, get all messed up because it's a brand new fitting. All right, so I don't know why I bought those O-rings. They don't fit around these fittings, but I read the instructions. They only want you to um, put Teflon tape on uh, the NPT threads, and this isn't an NPT thread, this is just metric. And since there's already kind of sealant residue in there as it is, I just, I lubed up the threads, and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna carefully try and put this in. I might have to pause the video because I'm gonna have to get this wire out of the way for the throttle body. Okay, so I found out pretty quick I was putting the wrong end in. This side's supposed to go up. The uh, normal non-tapered side is um, the part that goes into the engine. So I've got it pretty close to hand tight right now, but obviously because of the uh, space constraints within the area that I'm working, I can't really fit a socket over this. So what I have here is I have my uh, adjustable pipe wrench and uh, I'm just gonna slowly work out uh, work away at turning that probably off camera because I'm gonna embarrass myself if I do it on camera right now so uh, be right back okay so now that the fittings on there tight uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the first uh, AN fitting on and then uh, I'm gonna try and push the hose over I might have to cut this end a little bit because I don't know what happened but like if you look at it, it got seriously janked up and I don't know if I want to use that so I might just uh, grab the pipe cutter and cut that little bit off because it's it's clearly long enough it's not like I need to have every little bit of the hose but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, oil on those threads and then I'm gonna start threading it on all right so now the uh, the hose end is on to the fitting so now I can uh, cut that little bit off and then shove that hose end onto the hose. So with a little help, I got the hose end on and now it's on the fitting. So now I gotta do that again with the other hose end on this side. And then I can start putting the mounting brackets back there for the tank and uh, putting the valve on and everything. And then we're gonna do a leak check. So the Aki sump's installed. The clamps are in on the wood. Thankfully, uh, nothing exploded when we drilled. Now uh, we gotta go get Teflon tape so I can put the, uh, the valve in. Yeah. Okay, so we have Teflon tape now. It took us like five hours to get it because we drove to the wrong side of the town to uh, get it. So what you have to do to install the, uh, the ball valve is you actually have to take this Schrader valve out. It's just loose um and it goes right here so when you put this back on you want to make sure that you put teflon tape on otherwise you're going to have a bad day
because it's going to spew oil everywhere but i wanted to show you guys how this ball valve works so like you see how there's nothing in there it's just like clear and shit if uh if i turn this there's a little it's like an optical illusion almost see how it's like a half half and half so you turn that and then that's it closed so it's got like this next level stuff going on i've never seen something like this before anyway we're gonna put this on the car all right so the aki sump is in the uh the valve is installed the line is on with the fitting there's teflon tape on uh, every npt fitting lines going to the engine and shit everything's tight um so now what i gotta do is i gotta fire up the air compressor and then this is just like a tire valve almost this thing here and what it wants you to do is it wants you to put the air pressure to 60 psi which it's almost there anyway um but you know just for consistency's sake and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get soapy water and i'm gonna spray on every connection maybe even the ones in the engine bay who knows and you just want to see if any air bubbles kind of like when you check a tire for leaks and if it doesn't leak then i can bleed the air down to around 10 or 7 psi and then uh run it and put more oil in as it's needed and then that's it then we have a working AccuSum system all right, so we just did a quick leak check. Um, it didn't seem like uh, there was any leaks. So what I did is I uh, bled the uh, PSI down to around 10. And uh, now we're gonna start the car. And, um, well, if oil comes spewing out, then, uh, then I'll know. All right. This is the most stressful shit I've ever done in my life. Yep. All right. So it drank quite a bit. The dipstick was pretty much dry when I pulled it out of the engine after uh, shutting off the car. But um, I don't know if. No, I'm gonna have to get in there. As you guys can see, there's a. Uh... Huh. All right. So it's about a week after the install. Um, kind of cut it short because I noticed it was uh, weeping a little bit out of the main uh, valve port in the tank. So what I'm doing right now to try and resolve it, uh, I've asked a few of my friends what I should do. And uh, one of my buddies, he used to be a, um, a pipe fitter. And he said to try and uh, clean the threads of the tank and the valve with a, uh, a plastic bristle or brass bristle brush and then redo the Teflon and uh, see if that happens. And if it leaks again, chances are um, I might have stretched the threads on the valve or the tank, but just looking at them, uh, at least the threads on the tank 
don't look to be bad just a little dirty from like the teflon and then obviously oil so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna wipe them down and then i'm gonna clean them up and reinstall it and see what happens all right so i've got the uh the accusump reinstalled in the clamps um i just finished cleaning up the threads on the valve um i don't know if you guys can see that but there's a there's a little bit of um marring on uh some of the threads so i don't think it's cross threaded per se but it got a little bit janked up i don't know how but um Anyway, I took all the Teflon tape off. There, there really wasn't much on there in terms of what was in the AccuSump itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm definitely gonna put more Teflon tape on this time. Um, I cleaned it up with a, uh, uh, the bristle brush. Now it's just a matter of finding my Teflon tape in this mess I have back here. Um, I'm gonna also look up uh, a method that uh, you're supposed to use on MPT threads in terms of what direction and how much you're supposed to wrap um, the threads because I think my problem before based on what advice I've been given is I didn't use enough and I didn't wrap perpendicular to the way I was tightening and that might have had something to do with why it leaked so I've got I've got pressure in the AccuSump right now um, on the air side and I want to leave it a little bit longer than I did the last time to make sure that the uh, the air pressure doesn't go down. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to install uh, the white line diff bushing lockdowns because uh, that seems like a fairly easy thing to do. And then I'm gonna recheck the pressure. I took a picture of what PSI it was sitting at when um, the needle stopped moving. Don't mind this, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna recheck it when I finish up. And then I might leave it overnight even, just uh, leave it parked and then in the morning come out and see what it's at because that's technically what you're supposed to do. It's supposed to be like an overnight leak check, but uh, yeah. Okay, so I've got the car on jack stands and I've got the front of the differential mounted on, or supported I should say, by the jack. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the two front mount bolts and then uh, there's a washer up top that we gotta pull out apparently. Okay, so we've got both bolts and uh, the upper washer mount, or the upper washer is removed. So now it wants me to use the uh, included bushing lubricant to lubricate the um, top rings, I guess. So we're going to do that and put them on. Okay, so the front... Um, stuff <laughs> the front uh, mount uh, stiffeners are in now I just need to take the bolts out um, from the sway bar bushings so I can gain access to the rear mounts and uh, put the lockdowns on that okay so I've got the inserts and the washers on the bolts are hand tight right now I'm gonna tighten them up and then torque them. Uh, important thing, because these are uh, up and down bushings and uh, not horizontal plane bushings, you are gonna wanna lower your mount uh, support until you can thread the bolts in and they spin freely because you don't wanna put tension on those bolts, otherwise they might stretch and you might have a uh, preload on the bushings, which isn't good. All right, 
So, as you can see, no more leaks. Got close to 100 PSI in the tank. All good. I like that. So I would say that, uh, to me at least, that's a success. I, uh, yeah, no, uh, no drips. And we got the handle clocked properly. Got the gauge clocked properly so I can see what pressure's in there again. Only thing now is just kind of cleaning up the, uh, the routing of this hose here. Probably just tuck it down in between the seat. But, uh, yeah, all good, all safe. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more FRS race car tomfoolery.